If you appreciate these video explorations, please consider becoming a patron of Memory Hole Blog at Patreon slash Memory Hole. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. They've come to our children's schools, transforming basic education. They've come to our family's doctor's offices and hospitals, transforming medicine. Now, guess who's coming to dinner? The Rockefeller family's plan to restructure America's diet in the midst of global food shortages on this episode of The Memory Hole Blog Report. This is MHB Report. I'm James Tracy. The Rockefeller Foundation has been in existence for over 100 years. It was founded in part to burnish the Rockefeller's public image and shield the family's immense wealth from taxation by redirecting it towards what are deemed philanthropic endeavors. This has included bankrolling the University of Chicago, undermining America's public education system through the introduction of progressive social psychological instruction methods. Rockefellers overhauled the country's health care protocols, putting it on the path of allopathic medicine dependent on toxic polypharmacy. Now, the Rockefeller Beneficence intends to use the COVID-19 pandemic to intervene in the production and distribution of the United States food supply. The Foundation's new initiative is called Reset the Table, meeting the moment to transform the U.S. food system, and it is presented with no small degree of smiles, flash, and flourish. Yet this is not the first time the Rockefellers have visited our nation's dining tables. In the 1970s, the Rockefeller Foundation initiated the so-called Green Revolution, transforming entire grain species, thereby placing much of America on an empty, calorie-rich diet that has contributed to today's public health scourges of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and other terminal conditions. But don't take my word for it. Just listen to Devon Clatell, director of the Rockefeller Foundation's Food Initiative. You know, we recognize at Rockefeller that some of the things we did to solve the grand challenge of the last century are intimately connected to the challenges we're facing today, right? Using fertilizers to increase productivity has contaminated soil in lots of places. Using irrigation to grow bigger crops has drained groundwater. Um, creating a really heavily grain-based R&D industry and sector all around the world has helped to contribute to a current food system which is high on calories but low on nutrition. So Akin to the Green Revolution of a half century ago, the Rockefellers are proposing a radical restructuring of the American food system in order to address what it terms nutrition insecurity. For example, it proposes that bona fide food sources, such as fresh fruits and vegetables, be redefined as medicine the delivery of which would be managed by the healthcare and insurance industries by way of, quote, food as medicine interventions, fresh food pharmacies, and medically tailored meals and produce prescriptions. Along these lines, the Foundation's technocratic planners propose accelerated integration of food distribution with public education systems which today are quickly becoming primary enforcers of public health mandates in the areas of mental health and vaccination, not to mention ideologically correct modes of thought and behavior. For example, as the Rockefeller Reset the Table Charter indicates, the plan repeatedly emphasizes politically loaded buzzwords such as sustainability, a common euphemism for austerity and control. And given the degree of evidence now available, 
One can now all but conclude that the designs to exert greater control over the U.S. food system has required several years of careful preparation, and that the COVID-19 crisis declared by the Rockefeller-sponsored World Health Organization is being used to introduce what will likely be draconian measures on food production and distribution. Indeed, the international food and economic crisis of late have been exacerbated, if not largely caused, by coronavirus lockdowns. And to what degree could the manipulation of the Earth's climate and weather hasten the introduction of the new normals? For example, in the summer of 2020, America's Midwestern farming states experienced the most violent, catastrophic, and unusual storm in at least 100 years, and indeed, one that was scarcely reported on by U.S. news media. The weather event wiped out a third of the nation's staple crops, such as corn and soybeans, aggravating the already precarious relationship between agricultural production and human needs. In 2015, John Podesta's Center for American Progress, the World Wildlife Foundation, and food industry giants Cargill and Mars Incorporated sponsored Food Chain Reaction, a, quote, food security game, a simulation and role-playing exercise examining how governments, institutions, and private sector interests will proceed to address a multi-year crisis in the global food system, unquote. The stage was set five years in the future, or the year 2020. Much like Event 201, the pandemic exercise held in late 2019, the war game was held to collect and assess the opinions of an array of social engineers. It included mock newscasts alongside scenarios involving the impact of climate change, natural disasters, and economy and finance all of which were directed towards the purportedly urgent need to restructure food systems in the U.S. and abroad. Food Change Reaction's website has since been taken down. History teaches that social, economic, and political change emerge from what seem at the time naturally occurring and insurmountable crises. Today, more so than ever, Inordinately powerful and unaccountable interests act by way of philanthropic, tax-free foundations and are capable of moving individuals, societies, and governments in directions of their own choosing. Awareness and organized resistance to these designs made possible via alternative media are of grave importance as their implementation is now more than ever at hand. If you like what we're doing in these video essays, please consider becoming a patron of MHB at Patreon slash MemoryHole. For MHB Report and MemoryHoleBlog.org, this is James Tracy.